Good morning, everybody. It's Ben Jones here in my workshop again. It's uh, Friday. We made it through another week. Uh, today, we're going to do something that for anyone who knows me, um, set yourself down. Um, and I don't want to alarm and shock you. We're going to be making cold brew. I have a personal aversion to cold brew. I don't think there's anything wrong with it for other people. The caffeine takes me down, so I just don't mess with it. Um, every now and again, part of my work requires some cold brew drinking, and um, those are really rough days and really rough nights. Anyway, but cold brew is a, an incredibly simple way to make large batches of coffee that you can have in the fridge ready to go, uh, perfect for iced coffees uh, during the summertime. There are a lot of people who uh, will drink cold coffee through the winter, uh, much like the shorts wearing um, type of folk. And uh, yeah, there's also, um, you can use it for baking. You can use that, that, that concentrated brew, that, that, that really intensely flavored uh, cold brew. If you're making, uh, I don't know, coffee flavored brownies, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I might have to try that because when I'm done with this, I'm going to have a whole bunch of cold brew that I'm not, well, I'll, I'll try baking with it. Anyway, so what I have here, this is the Toddy cold brew system. Toddy is kind of the original name in cold brew um, and much like a Kleenex, um, Toddy has become sort of the, the generic name for, the, for, for cold brewed coffee. Uh, what you get in this box, um, the instruction pack, which is very nice. Um, this is a new piece. If you have one of the older uh, toddy systems, uh, you didn't get the lid. This is a lid for one of the parts we'll see in a minute. Um, and this is nice. This is a glass carafe um, and with a little lid. So when you put this in the refrigerator, you want to have a lid on it. Um, so that's good, and this is really nice. I like the uh, the nice wide base that will stand well. We want that wide base because our brew chamber, when everything is said and done, this brew chamber is going to sit on top of here to allow the cold brew to drip through. Um, pull it back so y'all can see better. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so this is cool, and inside here um, you'll get a pack that comes with two uh, felt filters and a little rubber stopper. All right, let's set those aside. We've got a few more items in here to pull out. There's this little ring. This is just a manufacturing, uh, keeps manufacturing costs low. That ring has a handle on it and you can use that to support your cold brew brewer. And then to make cleanup super easy, there is a pack of paper uh, envelope filters. Uh, it's just your, your standard starter pack. Um, it's the nice, large paper filter. All right. So, there's our unboxing of the Toddy Brewer. And I actually already unboxed it last night and washed it, so it's ready to go. Eric, good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see everyone else who's watching this today. All right, so normally I would be coming over here to my grinder and my hot water kettle and we'd be making up some coffee. I'd be using probably the Columbia Las Brisas. But for cold brew, since, uh, well, I just went with what we use in our cafes. Um, out in Olympia, we use our Vesuvio. Uh, it's a Nice blend, has some, uh, some nice dark roast components. It's very sweet, um, smoky, good little coffee. So I went ahead and I ordered, when I got my toddy system, I went ahead and ordered just a 12 ounce bag of coffee. And I got it pre-ground. I just asked them, hey, go ahead and grind it for, for cold brew. Um, so this would be, if you at home were gonna be making cold brew, this is an incredibly easy way for you to do it straight from our warehouse. All right, so very important. We need to 
cut the top off because that's how we get access to our coffee. If you're grinding at home, you don't want you don't want to mess with it, or if you don't want to you know, get it pre ground, you would just use a very coarse grind. Um, not you wouldn't need to go quite as coarse as French press. You could. It's a lot like AeroPress on the, in the sense where, as long as you're up in the range of coarse coffee, um, the same way that the AeroPress can use a wide band of grind size, your your cold brew brewer can use a wide range of coarse coffee. We want it to be coarse primarily so that when we pull the plug out the bottom, that the fine particles won't clog the system. So don't you don't need to fret about um, <clears throat> exactly how coarse it needs to be. Um, if it's really coarse, just give it a little more time to steep. All right, anyway, but let's, let, let's go and make this. So the first thing I did when you all weren't looking I took one of these felt filters and soaked it in water because I wanted to get it pre, pre nice and saturated. This is going to just press into that hole in the bottom and that will seat, that will seat right into the bottom of the brewer and that's going to act as our primary filter to let the cold brew drip through and into our vessel. Now, the rubber plug, the first time, <laughs> the first time I ever did one of these baby barista, um, I did, I, I put the plug in through here. I caught it before I added everything else, but I was like, wait a minute, the plug goes in the bottom because after our steep period, uh, we are going to remove this plug to allow the brewed coffee to drain through and it's really messy if you have to reach in to pull it out. So there's that. All right, now that we have our felt filter pre-wetted and our rubber stopper, I'm just going to set that, well, on the counter because it doesn't need to be up here yet. This little fella can just sit back. I don't need that till tomorrow when I drain this. All said and done, the toddy recipe um, calls for three, six, seven cups of water. The first cup of water, and this part is very important. In order to prevent clumping and clogging of the filter, we will add our first cup of water, eight ounces, into the uh, into the brewer. I'm also going to include our paper filter. This just makes cleanup a lot easier. So I'll just shove that down in there and do this like that so you guys can see. All right. This way, when we add our uh, coffee, it just it'll lift out more easily. Um, excellent. So we have our first cup of water. Now I'm going to take about half the coffee and just pour that in. At this point, it's not rocket science. That looks like about half. Great. I have. Uh, total seven cups of water we're putting in. I've added one, so I'm going to just do half the remaining water, which would be, all you math whizzes out there, we're going to add another three cups of water. I'm going to add that in just, just try to get everything nice and wet. Excellent. If you want to, you can do a little agitation. You can stir it. It's not really necessary, but you can. Then we're going to add the remainder of our coffee. Excellent. All right, and then we're going to do our final three cups of water.
just like that. Just pour it in. Excellent. So that's the standard recipe. Seven cups water, divide it up. Uh, one cup, three cup, three cup. Now, because I have this paper filter, uh, that paper filter is going to absorb some. So I'm going to add just another oh, half cup, so four more ounces water, anticipating what is going to be used. Now, there's some differences of opinion on uh, stirring. Some people recommend never stirring. Some people say always stir. Um, we just want to make sure that everything's nice and wet. We're there. When I added the water, we got that all settled pretty solid. I'm just going to twist this top down and take our nice flexi rubber lid, put that on here, and our Vesuvio blend is brewing. Water coming in at room temperature, there's very little energy in that water. So um, it takes a lot of time to pull flavors out of the coffee. That's the nature, that's the, that's the idea behind cold brew, <clears throat> is that we're going to trade temperature, reduce temperature, increase time. We're going to increase it so much that our timer is going to be a calendar. Um, I'm just going to come back tomorrow morning and give that a, give that a drain. Typically, I need to get my notes for this one. Alright. Typically with cold brew, um, you'll see a lot of published uh, time recommendations. 12 hours, 16, 18, 24. Yes. In the same way that there's low energy in that water, so it needs a longer brew. Every hour is a smaller increment of that brew time. So let's just say we did a 20 hour brew and every hour counted for, you know, 1 20th. Um, if we went and looked at, you know, uh, one of the other brewers, 1 20th of their brew time, that's, that's significant. But with the cold brew, it doesn't really make that big of, a, of an impact. Um, but what, what I would recommend is Set yourself uh, an initial test. If you're doing this at home, give yourself a 12 hour steep, just because that's a real easy way to do it. If you started it at nine o'clock in the morning, when you go to bed at nine o'clock, or when you, you know, whatever, nine o'clock, just drain it. That'll give you a 12 hour baseline. See how that tastes. If it feels a little, give it, you know, let's say up to 14, maybe 16 hours. Um, Experimenting with toddy, I recommend doing larger changes in your time so you can really see the difference. Generally, the 24-hour mark, once you start crossing into kind of 22 to 24 hours, you do run the risk with some coffees of pulling out some of the more woody tones. So 18 hours is a trickier math to do. You have to plan ahead a lot more um, because, again, if you started it at 9 o'clock in the morning, We'll fast forward 12 hours, so it's now 9 o'clock at night. Add six more hours to that. That's 15, 100. That's 3 o'clock in the morning. So 18 hours steep is a little tricky, um, just because you have that, that time differential. Anyway, give it a shot, play with it, see what happens. In terms of ratios, um, well, I put in 56 ounces of water plus four, so about 60 ounces of water altogether. When I drain this, I'm not gonna get a full 60 ounces. Um, an awful lot of water gets soaked up into the beans and a decent portion gets soaked into the filters. Some people are disheartened when they see how much water they put in and how much coffee they got out and then how much ground coffee they added, because um, it might, only give us about half a carafe. That's okay because 
what it lacks for in volume, it makes up for in intensity. Because what we're getting in here is highly concentrated. Um, I guess it's not concentrated, it's just intense, but we'll call it a concentrate because, um, it, because it's intense and, it, and it's a good word we can use. Um, what you have in here, you can dilute down equal parts water one to one. Some people like to take it as high up to one part uh, toddy to three parts water. So it's compact and it can really, you know, it, the volume isn't there, but the intensity of flavors are. Um, as far as espresso goes, you can match kind of one ounce toddy for a shot of espresso. That's a, that's a loose equivalence. Um, that's how we run it in our cafes is that, uh, you know, substitute out ounce for ounce, shot for shot. Um, you can heat this up too. So, you know, if you have a way to heat up a small amount of liquid, that works. Um, you can dilute it and then heat it if you do it on the stove top. I guess you can use a microwave too if that was your thing. Um, we actually have, haven't had a microwave in our house for over 15 years, so I kind of forget that they exist. Um, anyway, cold brew. It's kind of cool. But what you're going to get is you're going to get an awful lot of absorption. Depending on the batch size, the larger your batch size, the more you're going to get out of it as your water goes a little bit farther. So you can tweak your ratios a little bit. Um, but you're always going to get a surprising amount of absorption. Now, for calculating ratios, we're going to do, um, uh, with hot coffee, we're talking gram to gram uh, ratios, 1 to 17 um, is kind of our ballpark. So we take 1 gram of coffee, 17 grams of water. With cold brew, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to mix this up. We're going to go ounces to ounces. Um, so this is... 12 ounces, but it's, this is where it gets a little bit, little bit funny. 12 ounces by weight is how we sell the coffee, but then our water, we're going to be measuring it by ounces of volume, which is actually pretty handy because most of us have our measuring cups, and that's what we can use. So to figure out how much water to use, take your ounce and then multiply it by, if you like it really strong and intense, multiply it by four. Um, that would be pretty thick, syrupy, heavy uh, cold brew. Um, if you like it a little bit lighter, you can push it up to a multiplier as high as six, and we can still get a good result out of that. So, what number is right in the middle? Five. Five is a reasonable number. The actual toddy recipe that we did here um, is a 4.66 ratio. So, we took our 12 ounces, multiplied by 12.66, and um, that was our water dose. So that's how you can calculate for brewing your cold brew. And it is really handy that the 12 ounce bag of coffee that you can get from Batdorf is just the right amount for this. All right, so that is the cold brew system from Toddy. Um, once I drain it, it's gonna take, we'll put that up here, Pull the, pull the plug, it'll take 15, maybe even 20 or 30 minutes for that water to all drain through. I want to take out the little filter, rinse it under some cold water until it starts to run clean, um, then put it back in a little plastic bag and put, store that in the fridge. Toddy recommends that um, you change out felt filters every three months or 10 brew cycles. So. Much like changing your oil, that little bit needs to be done. Um, and it's either time-based or brew-based. So you can get 10 brews out of that for three months. Um, this should last the average drinker. I mean, you could easily go go a week on that. So, which is cool because I go through 12 ounce bag a week with hot coffee, roughly. No, well, now I just have that in cold brew. This will keep in the fridge <clears throat> about 10 days. Um, you gotta wash this out between uses. Keep those um, bacteria down. Store this in the fridge. You can cold brew on your countertop, but definitely store in the fridge. If you have room in your fridge, go and cold brew that in the fridge and that's okay too. Um, last little note, some little experimental things you can do. Um, 
if you like the cold brew process, but you miss some of that zip and acidity, um, you could do a hot water bloom on it. So you could heat up your water and add your first, you know, probably give a good two cups um, with really hot water. And that can uh, that can release some of the some of the zip and liveliness, and then do the rest with uh, the room temperature water. Um, and that's all I have for you. Be careful with cold brew because per serving it comes out roughly. the The math is hard to do specifically without doing lab tests. But the uh, the general accepted range is that cold brew per serving has three times the caffeine as regular coffee. I spoke with a uh, barista years ago. Um, she happened to also uh, have a master's degree in botany, so that was pretty cool. Um, we had some good ch good chats, um, and I was like, well, I can have three cups of coffee, like, one after the other, and I don't feel the caffeine, but if I have an ounce of cold brew, I'm done. I can't do it. What's up? Um, and, you know, this is just purely speculation, but... She says, you know, when you're brewing at low temperatures, those lower temperatures pull out different compounds in different, uh, at different rates. And there's, she's like, maybe you're getting some different plant sterols that combine with the caffeine in a different way. So, um, you know, she, her analogy was, if you are out on a Friday night with your friends um, and you have a couple beers or a couple drinks, you will feel that. But if you have some, if you smoke with it, the nicotine, and the alcohol interact to uh, uh, heighten your body's response. So her idea was that there was some other element, some other compound that's getting pulled out that matches with the cold brew um, or the caffeine to heighten my body's response to it. Much like how we want to be careful with uh, you know prescription drugs to make sure you don't have different interactions. Um, anyway, so cold brew, it's fun. There you go. Eric says, uh, don't mess around with the filter care. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> those things can get pretty gnarly if you don't, uh, if you don't care for them well. I like to do, when we do them in the lab, a Ziploc bag, squeeze the air out, seal it up, right? Get that as you know, airtight as possible um, without running through a vacuum pack and definitely, definitely give it a good thorough rinsing. Um, you know, of course your hands are going to be washed and clean before you start doing that, so... Cold brew system. I have a week's worth of coffee now. I'm going to try baking. What I don't have, I don't have my morning coffee today. So I am going to push this little button to get that water hot. And then I'm going to spend, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to spend a little bit of time with this pour over brewer from Shoal Water Pottery out in Raymond, Washington just because it's fun. All right. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.